Hello folks, going to crack on with the car news for you in a second. Just a couple of bits of housekeeping first. First thing is, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some highlights from the Fully Charged show in Farnborough and some interviews I did with a couple of people there. Also, there's a small matter of this. Uh, oh God, look at that. In the last video, I said that anyone that's bought me a coffee in the last year and any coffee members that have bought me a coffee since the dawn of time are going to be entered into a draw to win this little well actually quite large uh, infotainment system well the lucky winner was Matteo Locatelli now Matteo has been very generous over the years he's also been a coffee member for quite a long period of time so I'm delighted that he's won it as I said before when I get things from time to time to review on the channel if they're things I don't need to send back and I get to keep I will put them up for grabs for my coffee members and for people that buy a coffee so look out for more of those in future Please give the video a thumbs up and let's crack straight on with the news. So starting with news from the SMMT and it's good news. The new car market in the UK has grown again for the ninth month running. Um, as you can see, new car registrations up 11.6% compared to this time last year with 132, nearly 133,000 to date. As you can see, 46% of those coming from the private market, 51% coming from fleet and 2% coming from business. Uh, there has been a little bit of a shift there. You see the private markets dropped. Well, um, fleet has actually gone up and business has gone up by a reasonable amount. So it's a sign that the economy is starting to recover and businesses are now investing it again. Hopefully that will trickle down to Joe Public before too long. Onto the fuel sources, as you can imagine, battery and plug-in hybrid have gone up massively, while diesel has gone down fairly significantly and mild hybrid diesel too. And the biggest selling cars in the year to date, Vauxhall Corsa, Nissan Cash Ford Puma, Kia Sportage, Nissan Duke, Hyundai Tucson, Tesla Model Y, Mini, Volkswagen T-Roc and Ford Fiesta. Moving over to Auto Express now and new drivers under 25 could be banned from carrying passengers. Um, that's if you pass your test before the age of 25, you may be forced to wait a year before you can actually carry passengers in your car. Uh, there are two massive arguments on the side of this. One is that it's a nanny state, it's madness gone mad, etc. And then the other side of the argument obviously comes from families and support groups for people that have lost loved ones in road traffic accidents. So in, it's an interesting one that's sort of back in the public eye and we'll see how this develops over time. Supermarkets are being blamed for ripping off drivers of diesel cars. It says they're paying £9 a tank over the odds because supermarkets are keeping diesel prices artificially high despite a drop in wholesale sale price. The average cost of filling up a car with unleaded now is £80.60 and, and that compares to 87 69 for diesel drivers. By rights, the RAC says the tank of diesel should be £9 less. They say that diesel drivers should be paying 143 per litre as opposed to the average 159 they're paying at the moment. RAC spokesman Simon Williams said diesel drivers across the UK mainland continue to lose out badly at the pumps. Evidently, the wholesale price of diesel is currently less than petrol, yet obviously at the pumps it's the other way around. They say here that the only place this is not happening is in Northern Ireland, where a litre of diesel is incredibly being sold for 12p less than the UK-wide average. The supermarkets always take one on the chin in these kind of reports because they more or less set the price of fuel in the UK. They set their price and then some of the bigger sort of petrol station only kind of retailers usually go in three, four pence above the supermarket rate. But in the current climate, when the price of everything's gone through the roof, this is exactly the kind of behaviour that the government needs to be on top of because diesel prices have a massive knock-on effect to everything you and I buy in the shops. There's a really good piece here in Auto Express from John McElroy, and it's entitled EVs of Future, but legislation must not make ICE unaffordable. And basically what he's saying here is the end game is EV. Like Everyone's going to be driving an EV at some point. We know that because politicians have made it pretty much impossible to drive anything else in future. And because of that, 99% of the industry obviously is going to stop producing internal combustion engine cars in the near future and just move to pure EV because they literally won't be able to sell anything if nobody can drive them on, on the roads. So what John's saying here is that he knows that electric is the end game. That's where everyone's heading, but worried that regulations could wipe out a good five years worth of cleaner petrol cars. I'm also worried that legislation is going to mean that plenty of good serviceable cars get scrapped if the government don't see sense about using other types of fuel. Anyway, just wanted to mention that because it's a really interesting piece that I suggest you read and it's actually quite balanced, folks. <gasps> 
Charge UK aims to double the UK's public EV charging network by the end of 2023. New trade body calls for action on planning issues and VAT to speed up public charger deployment. Charge UK is a body that's basically been set up by 20 of the UK's largest charge point providers. That includes people like GridServe and Ionity and BP Pulse. Basically, they're saying that as the countries move into EV at a rate of knots, uh, they want to be able to roll out public charging infrastructure as quickly and painlessly as possible. Obviously, they want to drive a bit of income from it as well, which is sort of lost in between the lines. Um, but they're saying the government could help with things like planning and VAT to help this all get over the line more quickly. Because otherwise, we're going to get to a point where you can only buy a new electric vehicle in the UK and there's nowhere near enough infrastructure to support charging the electric vehicles. The SMMT claims that there are already a million electric vehicles on UK roads. And with more affordable models coming to market in the next couple of years, those numbers look set to increase at a rate of knots. Over at Autocar now, and Bentley has had an epic quarter of sales. It's its best quarter in its 104-year history as sales surge. Cost of living crisis and all that, folks. America's market leads the charge as British firm makes £772 million in profit. The Bentayga made up 42% of all sales. I think it's horrible, that Bentayga. I don't know about you, but I, I think it's grim. Okay, the new all-electric Abarth 500e priced from £34,195 in the UK. That seems astronomical, but it's actually not that much more than the Fiat 500e on which it's based. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of video of this now because uh, we actually saw this the other day at Fully Charged Live. I was there with Alex, by the way, who's my co-presenter on the Charging Status podcast, and we did do a podcast from Fully Charged Live, so I'll put a link to that in the video description, and please go and check that out on whatever podcast platform you choose to use. As you can see, the uh, paintwork on this is about as subtle as a bin man's jacket. It's a funky little car that will do 0-62 to in 7 seconds. Uh, it does lose out on the range though, only 164 miles of range in this one, compared to 199 miles of range in the Fiat version. Ford counters Tesla with 7 seat electric crossover. Right, this is an interesting one because there's still a massive lack of 7 seat vehicles in the EV market. Um, there are some coming. Obviously, we've got the, the new Skoda thing, whatever that's going to be called. We've got the Kia EV9 coming, but I guess they're going to be big money. So it'd be interesting to see if Ford tries to do it for a lower price. It says here that the US firm targets new customers in the same way as it did with the Mackie -E and the F-150 Lightning. The Mustang Mackie -E is my least favorite electric vehicle that I've ever driven. So I hope they do a better job with this new one than they did with the Mackie, -E, but time will tell. Ford CEO Jim Farley has confirmed that the company will make a seven-seat electric SUV as it tries to differentiate itself in an EV market that's reaching over capacity. And he makes a point by saying there are 45 five-seat SUVs available at the moment. And, you know, how many are there with seven seats? Not many are there, folks. Mr. Farley's hopes are that this will bring new customers for Ford who come for the choice rather than for the badge, potentially. Over to Top Gear now is a new £15,000 bolt-in kit that turns your classic Mini into an electric car. That's right, 15 grand. Actually, the last one of these I looked at was 27 grand. So 15 seems like a snip, doesn't it? That doesn't include the installation of it, by the way, so that's probably going to cost you another four or five grand, somewhere in that kind of region. So you're looking at a 20 grand conversion. By the way, that's plus fat as well. That's going to give you 60 horsepower and an electric range of 80 miles. It's going to appeal to people with a fair amount of money and a love for retro cars that probably live in the centre of London. Let's face it, folks, if you need a nippy little EV city car, I mean, it would be brilliant, I've got no doubt. Um, however... It's a lot of money, isn't it? Sedfortel's 2023 Goodwood Festival of Speed runs will be powered by e-fuels. The four-time F1 champ turned eco-campaigner will drive Mansell's FW14B up the hill in the greenest way possible. He says it's great to be coming back to Goodwood after all these years. I can't wait to get behind the wheel of some of my most memorable cars, which will be running on sustainable fuel over the weekend. Ken Block's daughter, Leah, will race Pikes Peak in the 1400 brake horsepower Huna Pegasus. And here's the Huna Pegasus here. Let's have a look at it. What a thing. Obviously, Ken Block tragically died in a snowmobile accident a few months ago. Uh, and it's great to see that his daughter's going to be carrying on the family business. Now, Leah is only 16 years old. And uh, this car, by the way, Ken was planning to do the run-in himself. So 
um, really doing it in tribute to her father. She says, I'm stoked to be going up the mountain in this crazy build and get my feet wet on the legendary mountain. Good luck to her. Okay, so over to the footage from Fully Charged Live now. A couple of launches in there and a few other random bits and bobs. Some of it with commentary, some of it without. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so and enjoy the rest of the show. They sell uh, around a million cars a year and they have done for the last seven years, predominantly within China. Hello folks, I'm here today with Toby from GWM Aura and we've just seen the UK launch for the Aura Lightning Cat, which is obviously its first appearance in the UK. Tell us more, Toby. Yeah, well, first thing is, I'm not sure the name of the car. So I know it's called Lightning Cat in different markets, but the name for, for, for Europe hasn't been confirmed yet. Okay. Um, but no, it's a, it's a super exciting car to get in. Uh, we were keen to unveil it here at Fully Charged Live because this time last year we unveiled the, the, the Aura Funky Cat. Yep. Um, and, uh, and I wanted to show everybody the next model that's coming along because uh, it kind of helps um, people understand who we are as a brand and yep. where we fit in the marketplace. So. Um, having it here was, was pretty important for us. Obviously, it's a D-segment saloon. Yep. Um, it's got um, a, a, an EV range of over 300 miles. Um, there, is, um, there are um, quick versions of it for sale in China, which is 0 16 and 4.4 seconds, so yep. it's super quick and whizzy. But everything you touch and feel is, is really premium. It feels yep. really nice. It's a nice place to be inside. Yep. Um, it, you know, it looks very distinctive on the outside as well. And, uh, I really like it. Very excited about getting it in. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was the thing that stood out for me with the Funky Cat was the the level of, of finish. Yeah. Fit and finish inside that cabin. Yeah. Is really from like class above. The doors are heavy. You know, yeah. nothing creaks and rattles when you prod and poke it. Yeah. It's really well screwed together and uh, and a nice place to be. Yeah. So. so at the moment we don't know what the car's going to be called in the UK. I guess we don't know I, the I final specs. I can't tell specs. you. I can't tell you the spec. Uh, the price or even what it's going to be cool yeah but um, I'm expecting it to go on sale uh, at the beginning of, of 2024 so um, between now and then that we will um, establish all those things and, and start to tell people about it and, and commence our preheat activities really for, for the big and just for people watching or listening to this that don't know so much about the Aura brand and, and GWM? Uh, GWM Aura is uh, one of Great Wall's brands. So Great Wall have uh, five brands and Aura is the EV only brand. So everything Aura is designed from the ground up to be an, an EV. Excuse the plane noise. The there, is, there is an irony here. We're doing <laughs> fully charged live, all about electric vehicles, and we're at a private airport, folks. With so, private jets. Yeah, then. yeah. So, um, so everything Aura is designed from the, the minute the, 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 the designer's pencil or whatever they use nowadays hits the uh, whatever they use nowadays. <laughs> um, so there are no compromises. Yeah. They haven't whipped out an engine and stuck a battery pack in yeah. and, and the vehicle is, 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 the handling is designed around it being an EV and, and the weight is distributed perfectly. So, so yeah, this is the EV only brand and, uh, and very exciting. They, they have got bags of personality. The, the, the DNA flows through Certainly, these two models you can you can tell they're both from the same stable. Yeah, yeah. sure. And that's really important. And it makes our job a lot easier when we're, yeah. we're launching a new brand to have distinctive looking cars, and they have clear DNA flowing through them between these two and any future models as well. Yeah, and that's quite a bold thing, really, for a new company to come into a market with such a bold and interesting design. Yeah. And I think lots of others are going to come in with a car where you come in with something that evokes some kind of emotional response whether it's I love it or I yeah. hate it yeah. it evokes a response it, gets, is... it certainly gets attention um, yeah. you know where I live is quite a busy place and when, when I, uh, when I uh, drive through the streets everybody stops and stares yeah, yeah. You know, it really yeah. gets attention when you drive along so. yeah no it's a very interesting looking car yeah. very premium interior so um, can't wait to find out a bit more in the fullness of time perfect well we'll keep you very much informed great so. thanks very much Harry. Hi folks, I'm here with Michael from Clenergy. Michael, tell us what you do. Um, so yeah, Clenergy EV, we have our own charge point management system. Effectively does is it sits between whoever owns the charge points and the EV driver when they try and charge their vehicle. Um, so they pull up to the vehicle, they want to get a charge, they communicate to the charge point using our app or using an RFID card. Um, then we collate that transaction, all of that money, that income stream for whoever owns that charge point, we send to them at the end of the month. The EV driver 
can drive away at the end of that session. They don't have to create an account with us. They don't have to. They can check out as a guest user. Um, they can pay whichever method they want, like Google Pay, Apple Pay, as well. So it's nice and seamless. Um, we sit behind, do all the all the legwork for the charge points owner, effectively, so they can drive a steady income stream. And that works for um, holiday destinations, hotels, restaurants, pubs, but also the workplace as well. That want to offer that service to their employees. Um, there's every type of business that has people visiting them, essentially. Great, okay, and where do people find out more about Clenergy? Um, you can find us online, so clenergy-ev.com, um, and we're also on all like social media platforms as well. Um, we're gonna be growing out um, a lot of YouTube content around how the charge point works as well. Um, so yeah, check that out if you get a chance as well. Great, thanks very much. So I'm here now with David from Anderson EV Chargers. And uh, David, tell us more about what it is that you guys do. Well, Anderson has got a unique place in the marketplace. We uh, got a lot of experience in EV charging. We've been in the game for 14 years. And so we know, uh, know, know, know what customers want. Um, Anderson is unique in the fact that we've got over 130 choices of color matches, uh, different cable lengths, different outputs and so on. And we're the only charger in the market where you can hide the cable. So the cable will wrap around the unit, uh, the, uh, put in the, the hatch at the top of the unit. And so it goes on your wall. When you're not using it, it looks blends in with, the, with your house. Yeah. And um, we, we looked at some of the finishes. Obviously, we've got different kind of paint finishes, but also some really nice wood finishes. Um, they're quite popular, I understand. Yes, we, we, um, we've got different color finishes. We've got a wooden fascia. You can have different color sides and so on. And we believe as the market for EVs matures, people are going to want more and more choice to match in with a house. Um, and if you're spending you know, a lot of money on a new EV, uh, to spend maybe a two or three hundred pounds extra on a charger that blends in with your house is is something that fits your lifestyle. Absolutely, and um, we've also got some good news about where these things are manufactured, have we not? Yeah, we uh, the unit is manufactured in the UK. We um, very proud of the quality. Um, it's hand built uh, and uh, particular attention to detail. So we like to think it's uh, uh, one of the most reliable units on the market we give a three year uh, warranty and we find them, them uh, not giving anybody any trouble so I'm very proud of the fact it's completely British built and uh, I assume you've got options for uh, one f single phase and for, for three yeah. phase we do a single phase uh, seven kilowatt unit a 22 phase three uh, three phase unit and it's um, we you know we do units that actually match with the, the company people's requirements uh, so absolutely, um, it, we find in the UK about 75% um, of people choose the, se the seven kilowatt unit. Mm -hmm. About 20, a quarter of people use three phase, yeah. um, and we've got relationships with uh, the preferred supplier for Porsche and Jaguar Land Rover. So if you've got a nice car, you want to have a, a, a nice Anderson unit to go with it. So price point for these starting around about twelve hundred. It's twelve twelve hundred pounds uh, uh, plus. Um, you, you can have various add-ons. Another, you can have a wooden fascia cost you another two hundred pounds. You can have a carbon carbon fiber appearance look uh, fascia, which costs about three hundred pounds. Uh, really, you, you you make the choice. But bear in mind, if you buy a new um, Range Rover, you'll have a, a choice of a carbon wing mirror. Yeah that might cost an extra 500 pounds, different lighting inside. So people are quite used to having a choice of extras when they buy a new car. Uh, but we're competitive, we think it's value for money. Uh, we've got you know, um, 13,000 customers out there, happy customers yeah. that are using the, the unit. We've got a lot of experience. You've got a nice app that goes with the unit. Yeah. It links with various off-peak electricity tariffs or solar. Yeah. Um, so it's fully functional in that direction. Fantastic, thanks very much. Click the video link to check out the special episode of the Charging Status podcast recorded live at Fully Charged Live in Farnborough. Thanks.